Okay, so this is how you send crypto from Coinbase to your MetaMask wallet. The first thing you want to do is you want to buy the coin that you're interested in sending. For me, I have some USDC right here, and I'm going to go ahead and open up my MetaMask. And you'll want to select the chain that you're interested in sending it to. So for me, I'm going to select Avalanche because that's one that uh, Coinbase offers. And then I'm going to go ahead and take a look here. So right now I have six USDC in the wallet. I'm going to take a look at that, keep an eye on it to see if that changes once I send the funds over. I'm going to left click this copy to clipboard and then move back to Coinbase and then select send and receive. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to select the asset that I want to change or send to, which is USDC. And then I'll type in however much I want to send over. So I'll do $1 worth of USDC. And then in this two box, I'm going to right click and paste. So this is the address, the MetaMask address that we're sending the funds to. Just as a security measure, I like to kind of double check um, these first and last few digits, just see if they match. Because the last thing I want is to send funds to the wrong address and potentially risk losing it forever. Okay, everything looks good, so I'll click continue. And then from here, you should choose the network that you're interested in. Um, Ethereum is a little bit expensive for me, so I prefer doing like Polygon or Avalanche. In this demonstration, I'm going to choose Avalanche. And then it looks like the network fee is about two cents, so I'm paying about one dollar and two cents total. This will take probably a few seconds. Uh, I don't think traffic is that high right now, so we'll go ahead and let it process for a bit. And we will open up my MetaMask and see. Okay, great. So it did move up by one USDC, which means that the transaction was a success. So this is a brief uh, overview of how you move funds from Coinbase to MetaMask. I also have some notes that I want to discuss real quick. Um, first off, none of this is financial advice. Always do your own research and invest wisely. So in terms of the blockchains that Coinbase offers, right now they have Ethereum, Solana, Avalanche, and Polygon. I personally use Avalanche and Polygon the most just because I have some projects um, invested on there. But Solana is also pretty good. Um, so these three that I highlighted here have uh, pretty low gas fees compared to Ethereum. And that's one of the reasons why I try to avoid Ethereum is just because uh, you pay a lot in gas fees. Especially during high traffic, it can get to like $50, $100 or something crazy like that. But with Solana, Avalanche, or Polygon, usually it's just a few cents. I would also recommend you know, researching the coin that you're sending um, make sure that the coin that you're sending is supported by the chain that you're sending it to. What you don't want is sending the sending the coin to a chain that doesn't support it, and then you're basically losing that, uh, losing access to that coin forever. So you're just throwing money into the void. No, I will say I think Coinbase will let you know what chains support the coin when you're sending it, so they do kind of inform you. But this is still something you should probably be aware of. For transaction times, um, usually it just takes a few seconds or minutes, as you can, as you saw earlier. But there are instances where it can take a few hours or even days, and this just depends on like network connection, um, congestion, traffic, all that stuff. What I would do is I would take a look at you know the network congestion of the chain that I'm sending it to before I send, and make a decision on if I want to send at that particular time. Though there are also some unfortunate um, incidences where you won't know until after you send it. So you're kind of at the mercy of Coinbase here. Um, so that is a risk that you should be aware of. So for me personally, I like to send um, pretty much always in USDC. The reason why is because Coinbase actually has little to no fees when you're making USDC transactions. And this includes buying and sending, which is something we do probably the most. If I did want to work with like another coin, I'll usually send USDC into my MetaMask first, and then I'll find a DEX or a decentralized exchange on that particular blockchain, and then swap to my coin of interest. This might be a little bit more tedious, but in terms of gas fees or like transaction fees, um, you might save a little bit more there. And in terms of, you know, it, it only takes like a few minutes if you kind of know what you're doing. So a common question that may be asked is, what happens if the network I want to send is not supported by Coinbase? 
So that's actually not too big of a deal if you um, if you're experienced with DeFi. They have something called a bridging protocol, and what that is, a bridging is you're basically moving funds from one blockchain to the other. So, for example, I like to use Phantom a lot, but Phantom is not supported on Coinbase yet. So, what I like to do is I will probably send you know by USDC or some other coin, send it over to say Polygon. And then I'll use a bridging protocol like multi-chain or like um, Stargate Finance. And then I'll move funds over to Phantom. And then I can use those funds on Phantom. So here are just my thoughts on, uh, you know, moving funds over and all that stuff. It definitely gets a little bit more complicated once you get your funds into MetaMask. From there, everything is basically, you know, your own actions. So you do want to be extra, extra careful. Always make sure there's no typos in your addresses or make sure you're typing the right amount being sent over. Just be very, very diligent because any small mistake could end lead to you losing access to your funds. Good luck.